Welcome back, you guys, to another episode of Unapologetically Her, the podcast that's for her by her. And today I am joined by Debbie. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh. So happy to be here. Always love when people say that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So before we get into today's topic, let the people know where you're from, who you are, where they can follow you, check out any businesses you might have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, I'm like Natalie said, my name is Debbie. I am at, from the GTA, from Toronto. I'm a psychotherapist. So I do therapy with uh, individuals, families, children, youth, couples. I do it all. I've been doing it for 14 years and I love it. Um, there are challenges, obviously, but I do love it. So, um, and I do that. I also talk with organizations about mental health within their staff. I, I come and speak with groups of people and do group therapy. So you can find me at uh, www.insidementalhealth.ca. And you can follow me on Instagram at Debbie underscore OPOKU1. Perfect. So you guys, I'm going to make sure I leave all the information down below. If you're watching this on YouTube in the description box, if you're listening to it, it will be in the description of the episode and it will be on Instagram and Facebook as well. So we're going to jump right into it. Tell mm-hmm. me, how are you, especially during the pandemic? I always like to start off with this question. Just it's been a year and a half of this. So how are yeah. you feeling? I, you know what, now I'm so glad that you asked that because I think that's something that we all need to be asking yes. people uh, <laughs> in general, right? Because not everybody's going to come out right up and say I'm not okay so if you ask uh you might get some some really deep answers so thank you for asking that I I am doing I'm doing okay Mm -hmm. um I gotta say as a psychotherapist I've been kept busy especially during this pandemic there is a lot going on for people especially we have never been through anything like this before and surprisingly it's even more now because people are thinking this should have been over by now Right. Why are we still in it? Like it's a year and a half. The vaccines, all this are coming out, and yet here we are with the cases going up, going up again. Now, what does that mean? And then the anxiety of maybe another lockdown, and oh, for the yes. children about what school, what does that mean for school? So there's a lot coming at me as a therapist, uh, as a mother, um, as a wife, mm-hmm. um, you know, as a sister, as an aunt. Like I just, it's a lot that that comes at me as it relates to mental health and all of that stuff but I I can honestly tell you right now I am doing okay I'm doing okay yes Yes. yeah yeah and I can't wait to really get into these questions because I'm like on average for like you know I would say the everyday person we're talking about how we feel but anyone who's in like um I would say like the therapy kind of feel yeah for you you kind of have this stigma that you always need to be okay yeah (laughs) right then that's what you feel like you always need to be okay but uh I found out the hard way that sometimes it's not so so we'll get into that yes so if you haven't realized already today's topic we're talking about mental health especially with regards to women so my first official question for you is can you explain the importance of mental health as it relates to women and especially during this pandemic you know what, Nell, I'm going to start off by actually kind of defining mental health and mental illness, yes. because, you know, there's a bad meaning to mental health, right? Mm-hmm. So what does that mean to you? You know, before the pandemic, I would uh, do speaking engagements and I would talk about mental health and kind of erasing the stigma. And one day I had this woman come up to me and she kind of whispered to me and she says, I have mental health. And I said to her, so do I, right? Like we, so, all, we all have mental health, right? It's, yeah. a kind of, it's something that we all share, you know, just like it's, um, it's kind of like that baseline of our social, emotional, and cognitive functioning that affects how we look at ourselves and look at what's happening in the world. We all have that mental health. So mm-hmm. just like you have um, organs in your body, um, the same as we do with mental health. So with an uh, organ in our body kind of breaks down and gets sick, you know, we would treat that. And just like our mental health, if it breaks down and gets sick, we should treat that as well. And that's yes. when it becomes a mental illness, right? So we oh. take care of our mental health, um, mm-hmm. such as doing things as self-care and taking care of ourselves. But sometimes that baseline gets out of whack 
and it becomes a mental illness. And that's when we start to pay attention and say, whoa, something is happening here. Yeah. Kind of signals to us and to other people that something isn't right and we need help. So that is the difference between mental health. We all got it. Mm-hmm. Something happens and it gets out of whack and becomes a mental illness. And we just treat it like we would treat a sickness, right? Mm-hmm. And, and take care of it. So that is the first time I've ever heard someone explain it like that. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You know, and that's where people get confused is that, Mm -hmm. oh, mental health. Well, wait a second. No, we all got it. We all share it. We all are part of it. We all have it. Um, When it kind of, when things go bad, when we, when it breaks down, it becomes a mental illness. We need to treat it just like we would treat any other sickness. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I talk about, especially with women as well, where we go, 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 go. We have so many different hats to wear. And then our mental health gets affected where our baseline is off. And it becomes a mental illness. And if we don't take care of it, it gets worse and worse and worse. So during this pandemic, you know, you as a woman, you know, you may be wearing different hats. Mm -hmm. If you are a mother, perhaps you may be working at home and you have your kids at home. Your spouse may be working out of the house or maybe your spouse is working in the house or you don't have a partner, whatever it is, your mental health may have been affected. And as a woman, I think it's something that's so important to really, really pay attention to mm-hmm. and manage, right? So, you know, I always say this, um, there is this number that goes around and says one in five Canadians will, will suffer some mental illness at some point or know somebody who mm-hmm. has one in five. I personally think that number is probably higher at this point in time, but I think about one in five, you got five people in the room, one person, will have been dealing with a mental illness. So it's Mm -hmm. so interesting to really pay attention to that, to really know that this could affect you, could affect somebody that you love. Chances are good that mental illness is going to be affecting you. So it's really, really important to pay attention to that, especially in this pandemic, especially with women who go, 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 and may not have that time to pay attention to what is happening in their mental states. So it's, it's, yeah, it's struggling and, and, these, and we struggle to come forward and admit it. We mm-hmm. struggle to say, I'm struggling. I'm struggling as a mother. I'm struggling as a wife. I'm struggling as a, a career person, a career woman. I'm struggling. And some people don't come forward and say that. So I'm really about talking about it. Well, see, now this is my question for you, not part of my list. So this is like a side question. Yes. But after like with your years and experience, why do you think women especially struggle so hard coming forward and say, hey, I need help. I have a question. Yeah. So and I'm going to put myself into that and know that not even just as a therapist, but as a woman who would like to consider herself an independent woman Mm -hmm. um, who can do it all who you asked me to do something, I'm going to get to it because I'm a strong, independent woman. I can do it. Yes. I'm going to get down. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever I can to help you out so that you can see me mm-hmm. as a strong person. If I have a mental illness, if I'm dealing with my mental health and it's not so good, are you seeing me as this strong woman? Mm-hmm. Are you seeing me in that way? And what are you thinking about me? It's all about the thoughts of what we think other people are thinking about us. And I, and I talk a lot this, about this too. I said, sometimes people aren't even thinking about us. Sometimes right. people aren't even, right? What we think as women, we've got to be, play this role. Mm-hmm. And that if we don't, what are they thinking about me? Yeah. So that, you know, that's what will stop women from coming forward and saying, I need help. What would you think about me if I told you that I was depressed? What if I told you that I had anxiety? If I told you that I couldn't get out of bed because I was just crying all night and I'm exhausted and I got to get up and go, what would you think about me? My status as a strong, independent woman would be gone. So that was what stops people from going, coming. It's like that fear of showing your vulnerability. Yeah. 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 Vulnerability equals weakness. And a lot of women don't want to be seen as weak. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, It's tough. (laughs) It's tough. And I think contemplating. Yeah. You, well, you know what? I'm hoping that people really can hear this and think, is that me? Is Mm -hmm. that where I'm at? Um, and do I think like that? I'm really hoping that people can really see that and look within themselves and say, why, 
Why yes. do I think like that? Yeah. Ooh, ooh. It's tough. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. This is already yeah. off to a very great start because I'm here. I'm yeah. like, wait a minute. I make yeah. some mental notes. Yes. 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 So check in. Do some chill, self reflection. Some checking yeah. in. Right. Yeah. We yeah. need to do, ladies, we need to do that. Like, yeah. I always say, like, going forward, I'm like, I want one day a week, which is like a mental health day. Yes. A day like no school, no work, no nothing, just a day for me. Just take a day for you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That mental health day is so important. And mm -hmm. I think people don't do that, right? That it to call in sick. No. From work. Oh, no. Right? Like, you wouldn't do it's that. It's like frowned upon. Yeah. Yeah. And where does that mentality come from? Yeah. Where you don't think that you can call in if you're just not feeling emotionally well. Mm -hmm. If you are sick physically, yes, I understand. But emotionally, if you are not well, people just plug through anyways and go to work. Yes. Or is that con is considered a sick day and you can take it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, well, men, if you're listening, men, if you're listening, take notes. <laughs> it works both ways. It's okay to call in sick, right? <laughs> it's okay oh. to call in sick. Yeah. No judgment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess now that we kind of know the difference, mm -hmm. leaning towards, I guess, mental illness in a way, yeah. or I guess mental health, depends on how you read this question. How do you cope with it on a daily I think it's about definitely taking care of yourself and recognizing those signs, mm -hmm. right? Because it's, it's taking, it's doing that self-check where sometimes we don't have the time to, to stop and think, whoa, well, wait a second. Why did I just think that? Why am I so tired? I slept eight hours. I'm still exhausted. What's happening? And those thoughts that are running through her head, doing that self-check is so important, but we don't take that time to realize how important it is. So if we can just stop, we can just reflect and just say, wow, why did I just think that way? Why did I just do that? Why, what is happening right now? If we can do that and make a world of difference in our lives to be able to take yes. a step back and say, okay, that's, that's not like me. What's going on here? What's going on? And why did I just think that way? Taking care of you, putting yourself first. And I know as women, that's hard too, right? You always put everyone, everybody yeah, and their everyone, mamas before. Everything first, but yourself. And then yep. we struggle and we suffer because of it. It's okay to, like you said, take that, that, that mental health day. It's okay to do that. It's okay to stop and reflect. It's okay to take that bubble bath. It's okay. You know, it's okay to do all yes. of that because if that is what's going to help you be mentally well, then you do it. You do whatever it takes. And the thing is, it's not like a one size fits all kind of list. Figure out what you right. need to be in that, have that mental peace. That's right. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I could tell somebody to go and do yoga. Yoga might not be your thing, right? Mm -hmm. But you have to find that thing. Find what it is that makes you tick and keeps you going. Yes. Find it. Yeah. Yeah. So important. <laughs> so important. I always said there's a clip I shared in like the earlier on in the year where it's like you find what makes your heart sing oh right yes oh that is so true oh. it makes your heart sing you know I need and, to find and, that clip and insert like right here you no know, go and seek your dreams go find out what it is that makes your makes your sunshine yeah right <laughs> yeah you know right <laughs> exactly because it's just it's so fulfilling you know, yes. when you do that thing and it's re-energizing that you can then get up and go and then go again, right? Mm -hmm. It's just find that and then do it and then go. And then go. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. <laughs> Only question two when you're dropping gems. I, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this kind of ties into the last question. What are some coping mechanisms that um, I guess you would suggest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so just like, you know, a, a lot of the exercising, people find that exercising is really, really good for releasing those endorphins to really kind of get your, you going and energize, energize you and to really kind of help you get to that state of calmness where you can mm -hmm. just sit and just like, I've released all of that out there and now I have that space in me to be able to just be calm. Right. And to be able to sit still 
and just reflect and listen to what's going on behind me instead of going, 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 right? So it's the exercise. Some people might not be into exercise, right? right. Some people might be into reading. Um, you know, my, my vice, and sometimes I'm not proud about saying this, but I love reality TV. For some reason, yes. <laughs> whatever it is, I will enjoy sitting in front of reality TV and just watch. And my husband thinks that it's absolutely nuts, but I think, you know what? <laughs> If this brings some joy to my life, I am going to yes. take that joy because I am team reality TV uh, only because I was watching Real Housewives of Potomac yesterday and my mom's like, seriously? And I'm like, yes. Oh, is it not just the greatest? Yeah. I'm like, I will sit here and marathon the episode. It is Thank gold. You. It is absolute gold, that show. I don't even know where it's been all my life, but I found it recently. I've missed multiple seasons and I've just started yes. watching. This is really good. Oh, no, <laughs> this is really good. You know, and, 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 and honestly, I don't know what it is. And, and, and my husband kind of says, you know, maybe it's, it's because the, the things that are going on in these people's lives are a yeah. hot mess, but it's not your life. You were able to remove yourself that. from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to watch it in real time, I'm just like, wow. And eat your popcorn. It's like, wow, that's a mess. Yeah. Right? Turn it like off. Like, it's drama and it's not mine. It's I'm not here mine. for it. Go ahead. I don't need to be a therapist there. I don't need to be a friend. I don't know anybody. I don't know any of you. I'm far removed. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. So, you know, you find that thing. Find it. Yeah. Whatever it is that you can say, you know what? I need to take an hour right now. I need to take an hour, watch my housewife show or whatever it is, or I need mm -hmm. to get to the gym. I need to do an hour. I need to do that. My friend uh, is a crocheter. She picked up crocheting. She watched it on YouTube and she can make anything. And that, you know, wow. I, I, I found that too. It's just kind of moving your hands and just creating something. She's, she's an mm -hmm. artist. So she creates things, find it and do yes. it. Right. Because it's okay. We're allowed to have that for right? us yeah yeah oh. wonderful wonderful i'm so happy it's reality tv like, <laughs> I'm like justify it whatever way you can exactly <laughs> i'll be like see when someone criticizes i'd be like just listen to this podcast episode yes listen to it yeah it yeah. is valid it's, uh, exactly exactly <laughs> let my husband watch listen to it right yeah. like she's not alone let her be know, one hour I'm not. One hour, just an hour, just give me an hour. <laughs> That's it. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to take a, a slight turn with your questions now. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about your personal journey. Yeah. So throughout your journey, what are some experiences that actually impacted your mental health? So, you know, growing up, I knew I wanted to be a helper. Mm -hmm. And that was my role as the helper. I have siblings who come to me for help. I, uh, you know, I, I've just people in my life that come to me for help. And that was what I knew I wanted to do. Then what happens when the helper needs help? Yes. Didn't ever cross my mind that I would ever need that help. Um, I, 10 years ago, I, I, I was pregnant. I gave birth. It was my first child. Um, and you know, you go through those things where you're just like, ah, oh. you know, you're pregnant, your first child, you have the baby showers, you're just excited going through all the pregnancy stuff, but you're excited. Mm -hmm. And then you give birth and it's like, here you go. Yes. Take the baby. There you go. Good luck to you. Take care. And they let you go. Make sure your car seat is working and is new. And then you, <laughs> they send you off. And, uh, <laughs> oh okay right right and and they don't give you these instructions and they kind of nobody really warns you about postpartum I think they're doing a better job now of, mm. of letting women know about postpartum but 10 years ago as a therapist I knew it existed but it wasn't going to happen to me that this was, was not 10 years ago this was 2011 2011 yeah 2011 wasn't going to happen to me right so it was, it was spoken about, it was there, you know, the, um, when I did my uh, hospital check in, they said, oh, will you need a social worker afterwards? I said, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, 
I'm a therapist. I don't need a social worker. Exactly. I'll be fine. Right. So <laughs> they send me home and here I am caring for this child. And I, I don't remember the exact moment for me where things just began to spiral. Mm-hmm. I do remember, you know, having my baby he was three weeks old. And I remember she was born in the summertime. So I said, I'm going to take walks, you know, burn off this baby fat. It's going to be fantastic. But I just remember walking with a stroller down the street and just in tears, in complete tears, not knowing what's going on, hiding my face from people who were also walking down the street and just sobbing, pushing the stroller and thinking, oh my goodness, what is happening to me? And I remember being at a, a um, traffic light mm-hmm. and I was going towards the mall and I was waiting for the light to turn red so that I could, I could start walking across the street. And I remember standing there with the stroller in my hand, just watching the cars pass by. And there was a moment in my mind that I thought, what if I just let go of the stroller? What if I just wow. let go? Cars are passing. I have this baby. I couldn't, I don't know what is happening to me. I just know that I can't do this anymore. What if I just let go? Mm. And it was a split second thought. And then it was kind of, whoa, 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 Debbie, what are you thinking? What's wrong with you? I turned around and I walked home. Yeah. I turned around and I walked home and I said to my husband, I was like, I think I need help. You know, I think I need help. And I thought in that instant, if I didn't recognize that something was happening, what could have happened to my baby? What could have happened to me? Mm-hmm. Something was wrong. Something had been wrong for a number of weeks. I didn't think I needed it. But when that thought came to my mind, I thought, wow, I need help. I need help. And as a therapist, no way. I should be able to therapize myself, right? I, exactly. I should be able to do this myself. That's the whole like assumption, the stereotype stigma behind yes. it. Yeah, right? Wait, like what can somebody else tell me that, that you don't, don't already, already know? know? Mm-hmm. Right, right. But there was a lot. There was a lot that somebody could tell me that I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's where I, I got the support that I needed. I got the help that I needed because I said something. I actually came out and said, I need help. There was a lot of shame. There was a lot of guilt. There was a lot of, don't tell anybody, please don't tell anybody. But it needed to happen because it was what I needed. It was what I needed. And my Mm -hmm. son is here. You know, he's he's 10. He's fabulous. He's great. You know, we have this wonderful, wonderful bond. But I always think back at what if I didn't get that help that I needed at that moment? Exactly. Where would things be? And if I didn't come out and say it, where would my life be right now? Mm -hmm. So it's pretty profound. It is pretty, you know, I'm shaking thinking about that moment standing at that traffic light. Kind of like the flashback. Having that flashback of what if I just let go? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite, you know, so I think about women that have those thoughts. Maybe it's not with a baby. Maybe mm-hmm. it's, it's some other thought about hurting themselves. Maybe it's just so much happening that they don't know what's going on. What do I do now? What do I do? And it's about actually admitting and saying something and, 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 and actually saying, I need help and yes. reaching out for that support. Yeah. So Ooh. Ooh, I know <laughs> it's uh... <laughs> that's deep, but the thing is, there's probably so many women out there who've been through this yes, or something yeah. similar. Yeah. And probably yeah. didn't recognize what was going on or right. you're afraid to say it because like you said, there's that stigma that you're supposed to have as women, not even as a therapist, but as a woman right. in general, we're yeah. supposed to have it all together. Exactly. We're here to help build, repair, yep. fix you, whatever the case may be. Right. Right. We are mm. supposed to have that all down. And any blips or anything, well, we just keep that to ourselves. Yes. We keep it to ourselves. And knowing that there's a community of women who say, you know what, like, let's support each other. I think that is the role too, is saying, let's support each other. 
mm-hmm. because there are people that are struggling and we need to support each other. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. So, yeah. <laughs> no, first of all, I know that's a very personal story, but I thank you so much for sharing that oh, you're welcome. and having you're that welcome. strength to be like, this is the platform we're going to tell it on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. And I appreciate you allowing me to to be open and to share it and mm-hmm. being a safe place. That. Yes, that's the most important thing. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. I yeah. know there's gonna be some women listening out there and be like, this this is for you in some way, yeah. shape or form. Right. It could be, you could be having a kid now. Maybe you had that kid 10 years yeah. ago, 25 right. years ago. Right, right, right. Think back to, okay, should I have gotten help then? Did I get help then? Mm-hmm. You know, right? And there's no shame in admitting that. No. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. kind of like to carry on with that question, mm-hmm. can you describe seeking health after the birth of your firstborn? And like, how did that process take off for you? Yeah. So, you know, it's just talking with, um, you know, I, you know, I had my husband, so he was able to help me find a uh, psychiatrist who sat down and, and he spoke with me and he, he actually came out and he said, you have postpartum depression from what you're saying mm-hmm. and what you're describing to me is postpartum depression. And the thing that he said to me, which was so impactful is that he, he looked at me and he whispered to me and he says, and I believe in you. And I don't know what that was. And I don't know why that was so impactful, but just even knowing that okay, I'm not in this alone. Yeah. I think that was what it was, right? I'm not in this alone. I reached out and I asked for support and somebody actually believes me and somebody actually is going to help me. Mm -hmm. I think that was the whole turning point for me is that he believed in me. And so getting that support, um, you know, at that time, it was the kind of the medication that would help to kind of clear my mind so that I could do the work to talk about what was happening because Mm -hmm. there's so many things that were overwhelming for me so the medication is just kind of helping to get the chemical imbalance back in balance and to be able to talk through what's happening because there was a whole wave of emotions and they couldn't it it, it wasn't just talking that was going to get it balanced it was also Mm -hmm. the medication as well um, and I will admit that I didn't tell anybody that I was taking medication. I wasn't, didn't tell anybody that I was seeing a psychiatrist because there yeah. was still that shame. There was still that stigma. There was still that guilt uh, associated with that. So I didn't um, tell anybody about that. But, you know, now that I feel comfortable, I'm realizing that, yeah, you know what? It was okay. I, I am free to share that. Yeah, I did mm-hmm. take the medication um, and it helped me tremendously to sit and talk and actually have that support on a weekly basis. And I did it because I wanted to be a mom. I knew that I couldn't be the best mom that I could be if I was not mentally well. Yes. That was my reason for doing it, that I owed it to my son to do this, to take care of me. Mm-hmm. And then I could be that mother that he, he needed. I say this to parents, I say this to any caregiver, I say this to anybody that helps people, is that, you know, when you go on the, um, the airplane and they tell you, you know, put that oxygen mask on yes. yourself before you help other people, because you're no good to anybody if you can't breathe, if you don't have the oxygen yourself. If you don't put on that mask, I love that. How are you helping anybody else? And that is what I use to help to describe people. If you're not taking care of yourself, If you're not pouring into yourself, if you're not doing the self-care, how are you going to go and help somebody else? Exactly. You can't do that. You can't. So I knew that I needed to pour into myself. I needed to take care of myself in order to be that mom and to take care of my son, to take care of my family, and to be the best person that I possibly could be. Mm. And that was me taking care of my mental health. Yes. (laughs) I actually, um, another side question, because you talk about medication and I think, can you dive into that? Not even just for you personally, but even just as a therapist, because I feel like there's a negative stigma yeah. around the fact when they talk about, oh, I have to, you, they want you to take medication. I'm not taking that. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, um, I, you know, I had a family member yeah, I, who was going through uh, postpartum um, just recently 
And I had another family member telling this person to, you know, okay, you can take medication, but don't tell your work. Don't tell, you know, other people about it because you might lose your job. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole bunch of issues around medication. And I, you know, I had that same issue as well, right? Am I going to put a chemical in my body and how is it going to make me feel? Is it going to work? Am I, you know, am I going to get angry? Am I going to go through different emotions? It's scary, right? It's scary to take these and what they would call them are antipsychotic medication. That makes you sound crazy. (laughs) Am I actually going to be certifiably crazy if I take this medication? So many things surrounding it. I tell my clients and my patients is that right now, if there is a chemical imbalance in your brain, if your brain is unwell, like just like you would take Tylenol or Advil or any kind of medication to help a physical ailment in your body, Mm -hmm. that same thing is going to help your brain your mind, even out the different levels of chemicals that are in your brain already. And sometimes you have more than you need, or you have less than you, you actually need to help balance it so that you can actually function daily. That is what the medication does. And once you get to that functional level, does not mean you're on medication for the rest of your life. Mm -mm. Does not mean that you need it all the time. You can get yourself off of it. But right now, maybe that's what you need. It's not for everybody. You consult your doctor and see. It's not for everybody. But if it's something that's going to help you get to that balance level that you need, it, 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 it's, it's what helps. It's what works. And it would, has been working for people all the time. Mm-hmm. So um, not to be afraid of it, but always working with your doctor, working with the medical professional, you don't do it on your own. You work with somebody who has experience with the medication who can educate you yes. and let you know what this is, what the side effects are, and if it's, if it's a good route for you to go. Always, always, always have a discussion. Always do your research and know if this is right for you. It may not be right for everybody. Uh, medication isn't right for everybody. But no. if it's something that you know a doctor is, is, is brought forward to you, do your research and make sure that this is what you want to do. But at times we need to get that base level. We need to have that balance. And that's what medication does. (laughs) I I really love the fact that you touched on that Mm -hmm. because I think that's the thing that we all think about whenever you hear therapy, we hear, and now you're going to be on medication and now you're going to be considered crazy. And now right. you have this or you have that. So the fact that you've been able to break that down yeah. and clarify that. Yeah. No. yeah, no, it doesn't. And you know what? I don't, I say, you don't just take medication and that's it. You do the therapy as well. They work mm-hmm. together. Yes. Right. They work together because you do one and then this is your life. I'm just going to take medication. You do them together. And that helps to work things through so that you can slowly wean yourself off of the medication and not be on it for the rest mm-hmm. of your life. Yes. Right? So it's, it, yeah, it doesn't mean you're crazy. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, kind of a, an assistance. It helps you. Yeah. See, enough. Does anyone, if you've ever been considering, because I know I think, especially during this pandemic and again, mm-hmm. with the rise of like mental health awareness, a lot yes. of people are on this. I want to actually look into therapy and I don't know where to start or the questions to ask. Yes. So yeah listen to this episode, replay this episode, you know, yeah. check out her socials and really see if mm-hmm. it's something that's meant for you, you know, yeah. do the consultations, just ask the questions that you need to ask. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Ask those questions. So just dive right into it. Make sure you do your research and you know. Yes. Sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So my next question for you now is how do you prioritize mental health when caring for a child? Cause I feel like not even mental health, but prioritize yourself as well. Cause I feel like a lot of people, once they have kids and it's like, okay, it's all about them. I dive everything into yeah. them and you kind of lose yourself along the way. Right. 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 I'm not, I don't have a child. So I'm really just <laughs> guessing, but <laughs> you know, right. heard it through yeah. the grapevine. Yes. <laughs> you know, and, and I think it goes for anybody, right? How do you prioritize even yeah. just, you know, working and you know, your career, how do you re- prioritize, um, you know, your mental health? Mm-hmm. And I think, 
I mean, I definitely had to learn this. I'm still learning it. I always have to learn it. I always have to remember it. But here's something somebody said to me, mental health and your mental well-being is a non-negotiable thing. Yes. You don't negotiate and say, okay, you know what? Maybe next week I'll you know, take care of what's happening mentally. up here. It's something that you don't negotiate with. You take care of, right? Because if you're not okay, nothing else is okay. No. Right. I always say if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. Right. Like you gotta take care of you. And that's how I do that with caring for, for my kids is that it, life is going to happen. Life happens. Things are going to be thrown at you all the time. That's mm-hmm. not going to stop. If you, if you ignore what's happening mentally with you, you're not going to be able to catch what life is throwing at you. Yes. And so that is what I do. So if it means that I take my mental break, right? So, you know, I, 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 I have four kids. And so it's about, okay, what do I do with my kids? So if I am taking care of them, maybe I can do something with them. I know that they are always asking me to play. They're always asking me to, you know, get in the water with us, mom, get in the pool. Or yeah. And I say, you know what? Why not? You know, right? Like, hey, it's hot. Yeah. Who's there? The kids are there. Let me get in and have fun with them. Right? right? And that's, you know, kind of me prioritizing. Well, why don't I want to get in? Because I could be cleaning up the house I could be, while they're doing that, or I can be cleaning up the yard while they're doing that. Or I could be spending time with my kids, cooling off in the pool and playing with them. How do I prioritize what needs to happen? How do I prioritize me having fun and taking care of me? Mm. It's hot. I'm going to go in the pool. Okay? Yeah. I'm going to go in the pool with the kids. Okay? I, I also take that time if I can, if I have my supports around me who can you know, help me with the kids and, and watch them and say, hey, I just need an hour to go to Starbucks and grab a drink and just sit mm-hmm. and just sit. Can the kids hang out with your kids for just an hour so that I can yeah. do that? And then I pay them back definitely by watching their kids, right? But as a mom, we also kind of negotiate and work with each other and say, I just got to run out and do this. Can they stay here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. They'll come to me and say, hey, can I run out and can play in the backyard? What? Sure, right? As a mom, I know how hard it is to get that five minutes. So I will definitely say, if you need that five minutes, take it. And yes. we know we support each other, right? And so just prioritizing that. Um, a mom, <laughs> she told me, she said, um, my kids go to bed at eight. I don't care how old they are. They're in their beds. <laughs> so she's got a 12-year-old sitting up in the bed at eight o'clock. But you know right? what? She's like, I need my me time. Exactly. I need my me time. So if eight o'clock <laughs> is when they're going to get in their beds. I don't care if they're sleeping or not. They're in their bed. I can put my feet up downstairs and yeah. watch my shows, read my book, you know, crochet, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. But that, and, it, and it's kind of like putting those strict things in place so that you still have some time at the end of the day for you. It's like, and even that, as a mom, you still have to set those personal boundaries. Kids yeah. are not. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because <laughs> the kids won't set them for you, right? Nope. Be, no, they will not set them for you. So, I mean, eight o'clock, you know, eight o'clock, eight o'clock. And if you can do that, that's fantastic. Right. Really know that if you're putting them to sleep at eight o'clock because it's for you, mm-hmm. do things for you, that doesn't mean that you are cleaning the house, or maybe it does if that's what's relaxing for you. Yeah. But if it means that you're reading, if that means that you are just catching up on Instagram or whatever it is you have that time that you've carved out for you. If Mm -hmm. it means getting up earlier before the kids, maybe that's easier for you, but really prioritizing, what do I need? What is good for my mental health? And that that is something that I make sure that I make clear for myself, for anybody that I talk to, my friends, my family, make that for you. Mm -hmm. That is for you. Important. Yeah. 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 See, to all the mamas out there, this is what you need. And if- <laughs> no, oh. well, you need to know that it's okay too, yes. right? Like, you know that it's okay. And a lot of moms will say, well, uh, where am I going to find the time to do that? They think that it is impossible. And let me tell you, sometimes it is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it is. It's about working real hard to make it possible, which sometimes seems like such a long shot. Um, but I'll tell you, it's worth it. 
Yes. Oh, yeah, it is really, really worth it. And the not even a, in the long run, short run. Yeah. Yeah. You need it. They need it. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So Ooh. get your oxygen mask. Put it on. Right. <laughs> I first of all, oh, what's called like an analogy? I love that. <laughs> I'm gonna start telling people that. Oh my, I'm still in the I said, listen, put that mask on because you're not helping anybody if you don't have your mask on. Exactly. Yeah. Right? Oh. Exactly. Yep. 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 Tell you, it's the gems for me. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Oh. So now going back, we're going to kind of turn it back to your career. Mm -hmm. How and you touched on this earlier, but can you go a little bit more in depth? And how did you know? And when did you know that psychotherapy was the right path for you? Because I think like there's so many different career paths, but that's a very specific title. Yeah, yes. I think it kind of just evolved, right? So I think, you know, it started with being a helper and started by listening. I like to listen. I'd like to hear. I like to give advice. And then it turned into, okay, what kind of jobs are out there that I could do that? You know, mm -hmm. I love working with children, so maybe it's something to work with kids. And then it turned into social work. Um, uh, and then it kind of narrowed down to counseling and then now you call yourself a psychotherapist. I think it just kind of started out with just wanting to listen, just wanting to be a supportive person for other people. Yes. Whereas I know that that's what I need often is that supportive person. I love being that supportive person for other people where, mm -hmm. you know, they can get those aha moments where they like. I didn't even think about that. Debbie, I didn't even think about that. Oh my goodness. Thank you for pointing that out. And I also say back to them, you did the work. Yes. You did the work, right? I'm just here to be a listening ear and just kind of feed back what you're saying to you and kind of guiding you, but you did that work. Mm -hmm. And when they realize that they have it in them, oh, it's the best feeling ever for me. Yes. It's the best feeling ever. That's just what it is, right? I just kind of, knowing that everybody is capable and that you have it in you to really change your situation and change it to the way you want it to be. You have mm -hmm. that ability. I'm just here to support you. I'm just here to hear you out and I'm here yes. to listen. And that it just kind of turned into psychotherapy and it, it, it evolved. It definitely evolved. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, that's really a true example, kind of just owning in, uh, not even your craft, but just own this thing that you genuinely had a passion for. Yeah. It's easier said than done. A lot of people be like, well, I listen to people talk all the time. No, no, no. Right. No. Are you actually hearing them? That's right. You actually take the time to give them not a bias advice, but the advice that they actually need to hear, not what they yeah. want to hear. Right. There's That's a difference. Lines. That's a difference because you're just telling them what they want to hear. You're not doing them any service at all. Mm -mm. Right. So this is, it's, it's, it's tough sometimes because you're going to hear something that you don't want to hear. Yes. You're going to hear something that is just like, ah, I didn't want to hear that. I did not want to hear that. I'm not going to see you again. I make sure they, I, I warn them at the beginning and say, we're going to talk about a lot of deep stuff here. We're going to talk a lot about things that you may not have uncovered or you may have repressed mm -hmm. so that I am 100% here to support you, but I'm going to tell you like it is. Yes. Right. And that's the way we're going to get to where you want to be. Ooh. And that's that. Right. So <laughs> I love it. A lot of work, a lot of work though. It is. I applaud yeah. you. Thank you. Because even sometimes you listen to your friends or your family and be like, this is a lot. Yeah. So you're taking in like a lot of people's, I would say, a lot of people's energies and all yeah. the different stories. Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. It's a different stories. And then it's about now you take care of you, right? Because you don't want to carry that into, okay, five o'clock, I'm done. Now mm -hmm. I got to be a mom. I just heard some of the most horrific stories today, mm -hmm. but now I have to go and, and be mom. So it's really kind of compartmentalizing the job, knowing that I'm there to support, but I'm also this person here. You and you learn how that. to master not to carry it over. Yeah. Your, like and sometimes I mess up. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I mess up and I'm, I'm thinking about it at eight o'clock and like making notes and things like that and not being able to turn it off. Um, but then, you know, if it, if it comes overwhelming, I realize this is when I need to take a mental health day. 
Mm-hmm. I realized this is my mental health day. I need to take this because there's a lot that's happened yes. and a lot going in my mind. And I need, I need that self-care day for myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So nothing just with a therapist, but with anybody who is in any profession where things become overwhelming, become a lot, take that mental health day. Mm-hmm. Okay. One step at a time. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, so now we're coming down to, I would say the final question. It's always a bittersweet moment. Yeah. Bitter because that means the podcast, the episode is coming to an end, mm. but sweet because this is when I'm going to make you go all the way deep. <laughs> the tables are turning and I'm going to get you to tell me what does it mean to be unapologetically Debbie? I, see, I love it. Yeah, I know. Right. Like it's. <laughs> It's the sigh for me, like what? I know it's like oh, you know it's it, it, it's been such a healing process, and even this right now, speaking about you know my pain and what I've gone through and what I continue to go through as mm-hmm. a woman, as a, you know a therapist, as a mother, anything right? It, there's a healing process, and um. I know people that have gone through trauma and I think trauma is a definition for anybody. It could be defined in any sort of way. We've gone Mm -hmm. through some things, right? For me, it's remembering that I need to treat myself. I need to treat myself with love, with kindness, with gratitude, and not have to say sorry for that. Yes. Right? Not have to say, I'm sorry that I got to take this day off. I'm sorry that I have to do this right now because this is what I, I am a person that apologizes for everything. Mm. I do. I do. Right. Maybe that's the Canadian me. I don't know. Saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't apologize for putting myself first, for taking care of myself, for continuing to heal because it's a process. I might slip and go back into those thinking that was not healthy for me. And then I have to go back and do what I need to do to get out of that trauma piece that is in my head. Mm -hmm. But I can't apologize for that because this is me. This is who I am. I'm on a journey. I am learning. I am going to continue to learn. I'm not going to apologize for that. No. Right. And this is this is who I am. So be loving to yourself, be kind to yourself, be thankful for what you have, who you are, what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And don't apologize for that. Because this is how we grow. This is how we learn. This is how we become who we are. And I wish much success to anybody who's listening to this right now. Anybody who needs that encouragement, anybody who needs to know that you can put yourself first, that it's okay to not be okay, but to reach out for the support and don't apologize for it because that's, that's who you are. And that's what you need. Take what you need. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Oh my gosh. How you just close that. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Uh, It's, 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 you know, it's a learning process though. Yeah. The learning process uh, yeah I say it today and I might not remember it tomorrow but mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep learning and come back to it the next day yes yeah and that's okay for all women out there do it thanks lady <laughs> please go back and listen watch if you haven't been watching this whole time share it tell a friend to tell a friend yeah. oh thank Debbie. you <laughs> oh this has been good now. This, Thank you so much. I Thank feel like so a weight has out. been lifted. Yeah. And you just open like people's minds to a lot. Yeah. It's a lot to take in, right? But it's, yeah, I, that's what I, I, I love doing is just opening your mind because my mind is constantly having to be open. I'm constantly yes. having to reassess. So we all have to do that too. Don't feel guilty about it. No. Okay. Growing and learning is like you are forever evolving. There's no like, okay, we can stop now. Right, right. Yes. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Once you've learned everything, well, 
right? All right, I think you're done, right? Exactly. But <laughs> you're going to always be learning. <laughs> Debbie, thank you so much for oh. joining me today. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. It was an it honor. Was a pleasure. Yeah. Now, before we go and I close up, tell everyone again your socials, your website, where they can find and even schedule you. I'm sure you may get some. Well, yeah. Let them know. Well, you, <laughs> you can always contact me inside mentalhealth.ca um, and then on Instagram, uh, Debbie underscore O P O K U 1. Um, and, um, I'm also there on Twitter as well. Um, on LinkedIn, you can find me under Debbie O-P-O-K-U hyphen M-U-L-D-R-D-E-R. I I'm all over. So look me up. I yes. I'm happy to talk. I'm happy to, you know, DM people. I, my DMs are always open. If you want to talk and listen and just bounce ideas off of me, I, I, I love it. I love it. That's what I'm here for. And, uh, I am here to encourage as well. So please look me up. I'm, I'm more than willing. Perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I always know there's a couple of you out there who are listening or watching. <laughs> so thank you all so much again for joining us for another episode of unapologetically her. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video, download the episodes if you're listening via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Also, don't forget to follow Debbie on all her socials. Don't forget to follow the podcast at Unapologetically Her on Instagram, at Unapologetically Her Podcast Facebook group, and one more, oh, Unapologetically Her Podcast on YouTube. Once again, thank you all so much for listening. Tune in for a new episode next week. Much love, peace. Debbie, thank you so much once again. Thank you, Natalie. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one, you guys. Yeah.